Cool. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, I've worked in security for about 20 years in a variety of crazy places, including this offshore data haven in the North Sea, uh, a Caribbean island, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, and now a startup in Silicon Valley. So I've gotten to see the whole spectrum of security. And it's kind of interesting why everyone cares about security all of a sudden. Uh, there's a lot of reasons, but really, if it's going to come down to one person right now, it's got to be Edward Snowden. I can't think of anything new to really say about him that hasn't been said in the news over the past uh, couple of years, many, many times, but have to say it. Um, so security, the issue is in a lot of cases it's bolted on. It's a lot of separate measures that have been added to systems over time. Someone thinks, oh, this is going to be a good way to add security to something. They add some individual measure, and they just sort of like keep adding small things that accrete. And there's this concept in, of engine, in engineering of sort of uh, choose two. So you get to choose whether something's fast, good, or cheap, and you might get to choose two. Although in a lot of cases you get one, or usually you actually get zero. Um, and it's sort of a fundamental challenge of all engineering. Security, of course, you've got the choice of secure is good, and then easy to use and cheap. And the holy grail, of course, is to get all three. We'd like to get all three. We'd also like to have the holy grail. But as we've, <laughs> we've seen, that's, that's pretty challenging. We do see a lot of people investing. But as we see, if we look at security and if we look at all the, the failures that have happened, we've seen the healthcare providers, the Home Depot, we've seen Target, all sorts of breaches your daily life with security, how much faith you have in computers, I don't think we're anywhere near having the holy grail. I think we're somewhere far away from that. However, there is a solution. So it's this idea of, of making things as simple as possible. Uh, the concept is simplicate and add lightness. Um, William Blunt uh, inspired uh, Colin Chapman, who invented the Lotus car, very high performance car that's really lightweight, which is why it's so fast. And similarly in security, we can look at, sec at secure and easy to use as sort of the same thing. If it's easy to use a system, users won't make mistakes, so they won't intentionally or unintentionally compromise themselves, which is the, the source of a lot of compromises. Easy to use, also cheap. Um, if something's easy to use and cheap, it's easy to, uh, to use the same system for uh, to test it, to sort of see what the problems are. It's not some sort of special thing that people keep in the, sort of an ivory tower. And so all these things together, if you have something secure, easy to use, and cheap, you get a virtuous cycle where things are even easier to use because they're so cheap, because you can have lots of users. So they're more secure because they have lots of users, so you have more resources. And you get to feedback, and it's a very positive feedback loop. So uh, we've seen a lot of systems where this actually takes place, and we can sort of deconstruct them. SSH is a great example of something that isn't perfect security, gets pretty close, and as the result is very secure. It's a lot better than what came before, which was unencrypted logins. You use SSH to manage servers. It's basically secure by default. We've seen credit cards, which started out as this horribly insecure model of you give the person your password, which is your username, on physical card. Um, and now behind it, there's this huge infrastructure to sort of do statistical anti-fraud on systems, so making an old system very secure. The other concept is making systems very simple. They have one function on or off, one function. User doesn't have to decide what the system's going to do. They don't have to learn too much about it. Expose as little complexity to the user as possible to make it simple and thus more secure. And then there's the idea of compartmentalization. So if you compromise a system in one place, it's not a global break. It's not like you use the same government email address for your adult friend finder account that people do. Um, you might have a separate email account for that kind of thing, so that a compromise of one system doesn't break everything else. You also have very short-lived systems, so Mayfly that lives for, for a, like a day or two isn't going to need the same kind of systems to protect itself that a long-lived system like a turtle or an elephant's going to need. So you can have systems that are only important for a short period of time. They don't need as much protection. So let's look at what kind of systems crowds of users, consumers use, and what the traits are and what the security measures those things have. Because if they're doing something, there's the wisdoms of crowds. And if they're doing something, they're probably, they're probably doing something right if they're, if they're reasonably secure. So we've, we've seen something that sort of emerged, and I was against it, but we've seen it. Email is basically your root of trust on the internet. Your email in inbox is your account recovery password uh, data store. So basically, your control of your primary email address is control of all your accounts. The other big change we've seen is that people have moved to mobile devices. The problem of securing desktops, people spend in, in corporations like $1,000 a year to secure an enterprise desktop computer. The consumer solved this by just moving everything onto mobile, which is a much easier model. It's been developed more recently and much more secure. IoT has the same kind of thing where the security isn't something that the user has to do. It's actually built into hardware security, built under the hardware chips. And it's used by the vendors to keep people from pirating their hardware, but it also provides a lot of security to the um, devices themselves. It's sort of ingrained. So the real question is, what can we do as users, as developers, as Silicon Valley, everything else, uh, to make your systems more secure? And I think it's to make them cheaper, easier to use, and thus you get more security as a side benefit.
So thanks. <laughs>